So, you ended up overeating and you feel like you've blown your diet. You feel very guilty about the situation. You knew that there was a better choice, but you still went for the path of least resistance and now you end up in a situation where you feel very bad about something that already happened. There's nothing really you can do about it, but it still leaves that feeling of guilt. And I've been there, I'm sure you've been there as well. And this is a situation that inevitably we're all gonna have to face one way or the other. So how do we deal with that guilt? How do you stop feeling guilty about food? And in this video, I wanted to share with you my four step process of how to deal with guilt when you're dieting. So the number one step of this process will be perspective. Number two is gonna be acceptance of the situation. Number three is gonna be gratefulness for the lesson. And number four is going to be understanding why this happened so you can move forward. So let's start from the top. Let's start with the number one, putting things in the right perspective. What do I mean by that? Well, look, I mean, you overrate, you know, it happens. You know, it happened once or twice or even three times, even 10 times. What does that really matter? If you think about your journey, your calorie intake in a scope of five years, Think of it in a scope of 10 years. That one spike of calories going up, what does that really matter? It's gonna even out. If you just look at a whole 10 year period, it's gonna even out, it doesn't even matter. Even that spike, even if you gain a kilo of fat in just one single meal, which never happens, what does that really matter? It's just white noise, it doesn't matter. If you look at it in the long run, that one event doesn't make any difference. So why do we obsess so much about it? Well, it's our brains, our brains, in that situation, when we're just highly emotional, when we feel that guilt, we lose perspective. We think only short term. We think that the world is ending because we overeat. And there's people dying of hunger in the world. They never even seen the food that you eat. Think about that for a second. Even if you don't put in that type of perspective, put in the perspective of that one single event doesn't change anything. It's still about consistency. It's still about putting in the effort day in, day out, and it's not about that one single thing. You can always just seek perspective and kind of zoom out, look at it from an objective standpoint. Think about giving advice to a friend. Think of yourself, like your brain, as your friend. You would probably be a lot better at giving advice, and you'd probably be very rational, very calm, and you'd be able to give great advice. But we're, we suck at giving advice to ourselves. So put things in the right perspective. This really, really helps. This is kind of diminishes the whole overeating idea. Write everything down that you feel guilty about, about overeating. You're gonna feel instantly better. You know, I typically don't write it down, but if it makes you feel better, write it down. You're gonna see it works. It works like magic because when you put it down, when you put it on a, some kind of external, you can use Evernote, you don't have to write it down, you will instantly feel better because you just understand the whole scope of it. When it's on a piece of paper, when it's in Evernote, you see that it's not a big deal. The second step, is really accepting that what is done is done. And that's true, I mean, we can't revert back time, at least not <laughs> time making of this video, right? You don't have the power to go back in the past and change that. Even if you had that kind of power, I mean, realistically, would you really use it on not eating that piece of uh, uh, <laughs> pizza or whatever you ate? I mean, come on, let, let's be real here. So what happened, happened. And the only thing that is really in your control is acceptance, accepting the situation changing your thoughts. Your thoughts are really, your attitude is the only thing you have the power of. And you have that power over your attitude 24-7, 365 days of the year, all the time. So use that. Practice acceptance. Accept the situation and accept that there you can only move forward. There's really nothing you can do about it. And when it's nothing about that you can do about it, the only logical, rational thing to do is really just move forward and try to do it better next time. The third situation kind of links, the third step of this method kind of links on the number two is really be grateful for the lesson that you've learned. We're really grateful for the lessons and really all the good lessons in our lives, all the best lessons I would say that come with a, a little bit of a scar. They come with a little bit of negative emotions and just the, the fact that you're feeling a little bit guilty about this means that you're actually internalizing the lesson, right? And that lesson is much more valuable that one single time you overate a thousand, even 5,000 calories, it doesn't matter, right? That lesson that you got that improved you as a person, that allowed you to deal with the situation better in the future, is much, much more valuable than any other thing you might have gotten out of the situation, right? So think about that, think about the lesson and be grateful for having the opportunity to actually experience the lesson. Because most people aren't in tune with the lesson. That's what they, they forget 
that it's really about learning, that we're all born with flaws and we're going to die with flaws. We're never going to be perfect. And that's the only thing you can actually do in your life is try to be a little bit better, right? Try to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. And that is what this event actually did to you. It made you a little bit better if you're in tune what really happened. That is the step three really, really critical point here is understanding the lesson and that instantly makes the event kind of reframed from a kind of an old negative thing that happened in your life, you need to forget about it as soon as possible. No, it's actually like, let's sit down, let's break it down, let's see what we learned from this. It was actually probably positive if you got a valuable lesson out of it. Think about all the things that you learned in your life right now that are really valuable, that really shaped your character, who you are right now. It's probably something that was influenced a little bit by negative emotion, not even just a little bit, but probably a lot of negative emotion, right? So think about that for a second. The fourth step, the final step, the critical step is really understanding why. Why did you overeat? What happened in the first place? So once you understand why, then you can move on. And why do people typically overeat? Well, there's a number of reasons. The number one reason usually is because your diet is too rigid. Your diet is just too strict. You might be labeling certain foods as bad foods, you might be labeling certain foods as good foods. You don't really uh, know the idea of like calories, your, your daily calorie amount that you can eat and then it ended up being like, oh shit, I don't know how much I can eat and then you ate certain foods and you feel like, oh, that was a bad food and now I have to like, now the diet is over and people often end up in this situation because they never track their calories using tools like MyFitnessPal, understanding that you do have a certain amount of carbohydrate, fat and protein available for a day and then you can allocate some amount, about 10% of those calories, let's say from a week, actually two foods that you could say are unhealthy, but you can still include those foods in your diet. And this is called flexible dieting. And flexible dieting has been shown to be very, very beneficial for long-term adherence. For long-term consistency, flexible dieting beats rigid dieting in almost every single study out there because people can include their favorite foods in their diet. But of course, with limited uh, quantities, but it when you include that food, it just devalues the food in your mind. Because if you just deprive yourself of pizza, you know, the only thing you're going to be thinking about eating is going to be pizza. Because that is forbidden. And we really, I mean, as human beings, we want what is forbidden. And that is the key. Include that pizza in your diet. Plan for it. If you plan for it in your calorie amount that you have for the week, it's not a big deal. You can still eat a slice or two pizza, even a half a pizza, depending how much are you willing to quote unquote sacrifice or you can make your own pizza that is very low calorie and then you can eat that pizza. It's not as close as the, the quote unquote real deal, but you can still get pizza, right? Find a solution. There is a solution to be flexible. That is a huge thing, especially getting out of that mindset that often I even see nutritionists and dietetics and all, all these people like promoting, oh, these are bad foods, these are good foods. Really, if you stick to whole, healthy, unprocessed food, like 80, 90% of the time, for that 10, 20% of other calories, you can eat whatever you want. It's really about being flexible. And going about the, the second step is understanding why, really it's about rigidity and not having a plan in the first place that is sustainable and that fits your lifestyle. If certain things aren't fitting your lifestyle, so let's say someone tries a diet and let's say it's a super high carb diet, very, very high protein, super low fat, and they just don't like the foods that come with that diet. That person's not gonna be very sustainable and for, for that person. You know, they might just go out and they're just gonna go eat ice cream and a, a very fatty steak. They're gonna add a lot of um, peanut butter and things like that because they just crave for that higher fat food. So for that person, it might be a better idea to go for a little bit of a higher fat diet, keep the moderate protein, maybe go a little bit less carb. On the other hand, maybe the person will respond perfectly well to a, let's say a ketogenic diet where they eat super low carbohydrate, only vegetables and everything else in fat. But at the same time, the person might be responding better to a vegetarian diet. You can't know until you try it out a little bit of different things and really see what type of diet can you stick to. Of course, obeying the all energy balance and the, and the macronutrients. But once you got that, think about which types of foods do you like to eat? Think about, think about the foods that you enjoy to eat. Include those foods in your diet. And that is why most people really fall into the overeating because they've been depriving themselves so much and they feel like, oh, if I can just have that, it's gonna solve everything, right? 
Think about why the overeating happened in the first place. Maybe the cause was boredom. Maybe you were just bored that day. Maybe you procrastinated that day and you felt stressful. You felt anxiety and then you went for food. Maybe you can solve that by adding more meditation. Maybe playing a video game. Maybe spending some time socializing, right? It might not be, the food might not be the answer for the, for the problem, but maybe that's the only tool you currently have, right? So maybe that's the only tool you have and then everything looks like that it's gonna be solved by overeating. So think about that for a second. Understand why. Once you understand why, you can actually move forward. Once you move forward, now you've got the perspective, now you've got the acceptance, now you've got the gratefulness, and you've moved forward, so this situation is unlikely to happen again. Even if it happens again, it just makes you stronger, you learn even more, and you can move forward faster. So every time this happens and you overcome it, you become stronger. And every time it happens, you become more resilient, and you know how to deal with it better. And this is my message for you. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever been in a situation where the guilt was just eating you because you didn't know what to do with it, you didn't know how to handle it, and I hope this process that I just gave you in this video was helpful. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.